Hey, it's Lynette from Claim Wizard, and I wanted to give you 14 quick tips, maybe not so quick, on how to empower your team. So the time that I'm recording this, it's holiday season. A lot of people are thinking about hiring, thinking about rewarding their team, thinking about maybe expanding their team. So I wanted to give you some ideas that might actually help empower your team to do work on their own, to be autonomous and to provide value to themselves and to your company. Okay, number one is to provide training for development. You have to invest in your employees, whether it's an online course, whether it's taking a free claim wizard course, whether it's a community college thing, whether it's um, an online e-course that you purchase for them or anything like that. It not only helps them professionally, but also helps them um, in the industry. So it does confidence. It does a lot of things that helps them. There are training communities like the claim.club that are specifically designed for education and personal and professional development for public adjusting companies. So you might want to take a look at that. Number two is encourage autonomy, right? So you want your employees to be able to make decisions, how you would make decisions, or at least get to the same end result that you would, even if their methodology is a little bit different from yours. So trust your employees to make decisions on how to handle cases and how to work uh, independently. It very much boosts their confidence, a sense of responsibility, and sense of ownership of tasks. It's really no fun when employees have to go and be errand boys and errand girls, find a bunch of stuff, do the research, and keep coming back to you for permission. Um, I am a Clockwork certified partner and part of the Clockwork system. We encourage something called IPO for your employees, right? Information, permission, and outcome. So those are the three things that you need to give your employees to be able to make decisions that is right for the company and not just right for you. The third thing is clear communication. This one could be a tough one, especially when the communication has to be um, in a way that is more uh, criticism and things like that. So the more open you are in general and not just approaching employees when they've done something wrong or done something you don't like, they're not going to get that knee-jerk reaction of like, oh, the boss is coming to me. I must have done something wrong. Open, clear, transparent communication regularly. Make sure you share your company's goals. If you have sales goals, if you have um, number of client goals, if you have expansion goals, whatever that is, make sure you share your vision with your employees. They, they can't be working towards the same end and goal if they don't know what your vision is. Update them regularly, make them feel engaged. Uh, we have um, on our team over here, we do twice a week stand-up meetings. Um, so basically we get, because we're all remote, we work, we jump on a call, a video call, and we kind of go down the lowdown of what we're working on so that everybody is aware of what else everyone else is working on, what we can contribute to each other, what we need help with, um, determining order of importance of things, lots of information. If you don't talk to each other and you work in a silo, you're never going to get ahead. The fourth thing is to recognize and reward. Acknowledge them for their hard work. It can be bonuses, promotions, or simply like a verbal recognition. When employees feel appreciated, they are motivated to excel. Everybody likes a pat on the back, a pat on the head, whatever, pat on the shoulder. It doesn't have to be monetary. It could be you know, a monthly, you know, Starbucks or Amazon gift card. It could be, you know, a silly trophy that you pass around the office sort of thing. It can be, um, you know, just public awareness and public acknowledgement in a Slack channel or a chat channel that you use. It doesn't have to be huge, big bonuses all the time. My personal philosophy on this is praise publicly and reprimand pri privately. So kind of go on that. The fifth one is to delegate responsibility. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have a hard time with that. I don't always eat my own dog food. So delegate responsibility and tasks based on your employee strengths and their expertise that allows them to take ownership of their work and develop a deep sense of pride in their contributions. What y'all do helping policyholders indemnify their, their losses is, is that's one of the biggest pivot points in a person's life, um, whether it be commercial or residential, let your employees 
have responsibility for some of that. Let them take control of some of the process. Absolutely. And this kind of goes back to uh, my Clockwork Certified Partnership, which is give your folks the information they need to, to, to actually do a task, give them the permission to do it. And even the guardrails of like, okay, you can do something within these parameters, but if it goes over here, you have to loop me in. So they know where their job starts and ends. And then obviously you need to give them the outcome that they need to get. So how they get to that outcome is up to them, but they're going to deliver the outcome that you're looking for. The next one is providing feedback. And this is kind of like, even if it is a positive feedback, these are usually done in my opinion, a little bit better privately so that they can have open communication with you and not feel that they're being judged or their, your teammates are going to feel like, well, I do that better than she does. And, you know, that sort of thing. You don't want any competition between staff for sure but offering constructive feedback. So you do it in the sandwich, you offer something positive, something that needs feedback on, and then offer something positive again. Uh, it allows them to operate in this culture of continuous improvement, the CI, right? It's continuous improvement means, you know, we do something and it's not linear. It comes around in a circle. We're always learning. We're always improving. Make sure that you're giving them feedback on that because if you let them go on their own, they're going to come up with stuff in their head and they're going to get freaked out over it. But if you always let them know where they stand, not with you personally, but where they stand in their job, their role in the company in general, it's extremely helpful and extremely uh, grateful. Like they're, they want that, honestly. So number seven is encourage innovation, right? So encourage your employees when they're, when they're living in their task, don't shove what they're supposed to do or how they're supposed to do it down their throat. Let them come up with solutions and ideas to prove the processes that they are responsible for or client service that they are responsible for. Make them feel and honestly believe this, that their value and their input is very much needed and very much makes a difference and can become the secret sauce of your company. Number eight, foster a collaborative culture. It is really difficult to work in a silo. And one thing I actually had a conversation with my 16-year-old team the other day is he's in finals at weeks right now. And he was, you know, everything is learning on your own and taking tests on your own. And to me, it's a little opposite because in real life, once you get out of school, you're not necessarily always doing everything all by yourself in a silo with no input or collaboration with other people. Um so a lot of times, all of us have come out of a, a, a schooling system, wherever, college, primary school, anything, where you're not taught to collaborate with other people. It's seen as cheating or a sign of weakness, or I don't know enough, so I have to have somebody else help us. Two minds are always better than one. One plus one equals three, that sort of thing. But let them pick their teams that they want to work with and don't worry about, well, this person works in this team and this person works in that team. Let them cross pollinate a little bit because it's going to be better for everyone. Number nine, offer flexibility, flexible work arrangements when possible, work-life balance, that sort of thing. Half of my team works remotely. Most of us are in the same city. Some of us aren't even in the same country all the time, um, that sort of thing. But the flexibility to be able to do that. Now, one of the core um, pillars of our company is family first, right? So nothing should come before your family. But with that, my you know staff will say, can someone cover me or you know things like that. Like they're not just willing to leave their work family hanging for their family family, um, but offer flexibility as much as you can. Now, of course, things like customer ser service or support, there's kind of timeframes on that. But a lot of work specifically in your industry can be and is done off hours. So if that makes more sense for someone, as long as they hit their deadlines, you shouldn't really matter when it gets done as long as it's done by that deadline. So give them flexibility in a lot of things. Number 10, lead by example. Now, I'm not saying do all the work so they know how to do the work, but set a positive example for your employees. Demonstrate the qualities and the work ethics that you um, expect from them. If you're quite honestly sassy and mouthy with clients um, because you know that has to happen or with a carrier or whatever, but then you want your clients to be sweet all the time where they're going to do what you, how they see you work. So just be mindful of that lead by example. Number 11, pay attention to your employees' well-being. 
Now, I'm not saying that all the personal drama should come into work, but wait, pay attention to, you know, if they have, you know, there's things in their family that they need to take care of, um, mental and physical health, you know, not just your employees, but their families and their friends as well. It affects how they feel. It affects how they do work. Um, you know, there's, oh, there always needs to be that line between professional and personal, but just be very well aware that their well-being is very important. If they're not at top of their game and can keep a clear mind, they're not going to do the best work for you, honestly, because they're going to be worrying about something else. So just take measures to identify and to help with that when you can. 12, create growth opportunities. Now we all run super small businesses. And one of the things I always say <laughs> when we hire someone here at Claim Wizard, I'm like, this is it. Like we're a small company. There's not like, you know, a office of 50 people that are working payroll or 40 people that are working in customer support. Um, you know, you can go in and, you know, have a job, create growth opportunities without necessarily always, you know, um, creating new things or having a big department for them to work around in. Um, some of my employees started out doing one thing and now they've shifted into something else because there was a need for that within our company and they had a skill set and they identified it and said, hey, you know, we're taking care of this already. I think I would be better utilized if I moved somewhere else. So this is also um, encouraging innovation for them. See, let them identify what else is needed and where their skills can be put forward in your company to best serve all of you, you, the company, and the employee. And then, of course, with providing feedback, the opposite here is soliciting feedback. Make sure that you ask them how you're doing, how you can help them more, how they're feeling. It's not just a one-way street. It's just not you giving them critiques. Definitely you know, sometimes you have to just sit there and listen to it and really tr take constructive criticism yourself. But by providing feedback and open communication and having a collaborative culture, they are going to feel more comfortable with you to provide feedback on you. Something as simple as, um, you know, I don't know how you want me to deal with this. And every time I do help you, I, I give you something boss lady, it's a different answer. Like, can we just sit down with this and, you know, put it all out in a, you know, an SOP or something, or tell me what I, how you want me to resolve this so that I don't have to go to you. Um, so make sure that you hear feedback as much as you're giving it. And then number 14, I think should be absolutely first is lead with empathy. Show empathy and understanding to your employees' personal and their professional challenges, right? It builds trust. It builds rapport. It makes them feel valued as individuals. If they just took a verbal beating by a client of yours, warranted or not, um, make sure you, you sit with them or that someone in your company is let, you're having a sounding board for that. Um, we get clients here from time to time that call up and get a little sassy with us. And, you know, as long as my staff knows it's not personal, it's frustration on the client's part or the prospect's part or whomever it is, make sure that they understand that, you know, you're here with them, that work can be an emotional place and it's not always zeros and ones, you know, black and white on or off, you know, do or not do. There's a lot of shades of gray in there and just make sure that you're connecting with your employees in a professional and empathetic way. Okay. So that was my rapid fire. I would love to hear any feedback. Did I miss anything? How do you empower your team? How do you make them feel and let them feel empowered and autonomous and productive in your company? I'd like to hear that. Mm -hmm.